Hi folks, David Fine here from Keys Moths. We are going on an adventure a little further north. We're not in the Keys. We are up around the rim of Lake Okeechobee. Literally Lake Okeechobee is right on the other side of that tree. He's right there. And um, Port Mayaka is right back there. But guys, this area ha is loaded with hackberry trees. And this is the furthest south that I'm aware of that tawny emperors, Astrocampa clayton flora, we have a cool Florida subspecies of the uh, tawny emperor, and Astrocampa celtus, I forget the subspecies name, but that one is a pretty distinct South Florida subspecies. But guys, this is as far south as they come. So we are gonna try and show you both of those species. They live around the rim of the lake, and this is their habitat, and the best way to attract them is with rotting fruit. So I just made a video on how to prepare some fruit to attract butterflies and moths. Hope you check that out. Um, we'll link that video here in the uh, description of this one. Uh, if you ever want to go baiting for bugs, <laughs> we get all kinds of things. So this purpose of this video, guys, we're going to show you how we do in this environment. Now, this looks like a jungle, but really, guys, th th this is a road. There's a stand of trees that goes back about oh, I would say 40, 50 feet, maybe a little bit more, maybe 60 feet. And past that, all it is, is sugar cane. And so as far all the way around the rim of the lake, Lake Okeechobee, these hackberry trees and this little, this little rim of trees, is, it's a, they're all over the place. And it's, a very, it's concentrated into one little area. And there are Last time I did this was like 25 years ago. So it's been a long time. But when I did, there were literally hundreds, maybe thousands of butterflies and moths in the traps. And we had a blast. So let's see how we do. I'm going to show you how we set traps to survey butterflies and moths. Don't forget to like. Careful on roads. Careful on roads. Don't forget to like the video. Subscribe to the channel if you haven't done so already and uh drop me a comment i would love to hear from you what you would like for me to search for next we are dedicated to showing you as much as we can about the butterflies and moths of south florida guys also this is a personal guarantee personal guarantee i'm not going to harm any butterflies in this endeavor okay uh, all of our traps are catch and release and the only thing i will harvest is maybe a couple females to get some eggs and then i'll let them go getting eggs from these species is very easy and so i don't want you to worry about uh us i'm not collecting them i have no need to collect them uh and so this is literally just to document the life cycle through video so that we can share with our youtube audience so guys um just if you have any questions about that please write me i'd, I'd be happy to answer um you know that's a philosophical thing as far as collecting and you know, should we or shouldn't we? But here's the thing. We are interested in science. We're interested in documenting. We're interested in showing you guys as much as we can about these creatures. So let's get to the video. All right, guys. One of the things to keep in mind when bait trapping, bait trapping definitely works better when it's dry and hot. If you have that moisture out there, then it's it really helps. Today, there's a 36% chance of rain. Tomorrow and Wednesday seem pretty dry. That's gonna be a great situation for bait trapping because it's gonna be hot, it's gonna be dry. Butterflies are looking for something to stay hydrated. Now, Thursday, which is the day I'm planning on coming out here to check the traps, there is a 60 or 58% chance and then Friday's 55. Let's see. And then it goes back down. I was going to come out Saturday. No, I, w I can't do Saturday. Maybe even Monday. Well, the, the rain chances are up a little bit compared to what they have. And it's been very, very dry. So um, I think personally, Tuesday and Wednesday with the 16% chance on Tuesday, 24% chance on 16% uh, chance on Tuesday, 24% chance on Wednesday, I think there's going to be the days that will yield the most insects in the trap because they're looking for moisture. So let's see if I'm right, uh, but that is something to keep in mind 
Let's see what the wind speed is going to be. All right, so southwest, 7 miles per hour. That's great wind. You don't want a whole lot of wind. 8 miles an hour Tuesday. Thursday, 6 miles an hour. Friday, 7 miles an hour. Then it goes up to 12 on Saturday. All right, so the wind looks good. It starts to get a little bit more wet later on. It's okay because the traps are hanging in those hammocks. So we'll see how we do, guys. All right, guys. So I'm selecting a spot. And here is a great location because this location is loaded with hackberry trees. Guys, this is our, our native, sorry for the traffic in the background. This is our native hackberry. It's a Celtis species. You can tell what they look like from the road. They're very distinct. Um, they have this kind of long wispy thing going on here. And, they, and it's literally, everywhere on the side of this road here there's other trees too so we got strangler fig so we can probably see some ruddy dagger wings uh we've got black and brownie eye growing in the grass here we might see malachites i've seen malachites here before but guys this is the reason i'm stopping here this plant this tree very common in most of north america uh is you know this is kind of where it stops growing there's some places further south in broward county parks that have it but I am unaware that the the emperor butterflies live that far south. So this stuff is where it's at, guys. We've got the tawny emperor, the uh, hackberry butterfly, the question mark, the snout butterfly, all use this stuff for larval host plant. Um, I can't wait to put out some traps and see what happens, guys. Okay, how do I get back? All right, folks, so here's the deal. I, I have the camera in my head and I'm filming as I'm doing this with my GoPro, but um, here's the deal. The road is right there. Right here is farmland. Literally, if I go over this little bump, that's all sugarcane field. And I like this area because it's kind of lower and it's kind of out of the wind. And one of the things when you're putting a bait trap out, you got to be careful about wind because if there's too much wind, the trap will flow back and forth because it could be hanging from a tree. Also, it's good that it's under some cover in case it starts to rain and your bait doesn't get all washed out because you don't want all that good smelling uh, gassy alcohol stuff that's brewing there to get washed out by water. So you want your bait to be wet, which is good, but you want it to be that nice fermenting fruit. So now we've got one limb. I'm gonna put two traps here. I've got a big limb from this ficus tree. There's a big strangler fig tree right there. Check out that limb right there. That's a perfect place to hang a trap because it's, it's a strong enough limb to hold the trap, uh, to hold the weight of the trap, and it's far enough away from all the other uh, trees so that it doesn't get, um, there's not an opportunity for animals like rats and raccoons and stuff like that to crawl and you know onto the trap from other limbs. So this is a really good place to have it. And there's actually some dappled sunlight, which is also a good thing because butterflies will come into these shaded areas for bait, but they, they love sun. Butterflies are sun lovers. So I'm going to hang a trap right here, guys, and we're going to go to my GoPro footage for that. Uh, but I'm, I'm really excited because I think this is going to be a perfect place to find some emperor butterflies. Let's check this out. All right, when you're hanging bait traps, guys, this is what you want to see. I put this together, this bait, about, it's about three and a half days ago. It's probably a little long. It's starting to turn brown. I have some other bait that's a little newer. They haven't quite filled up with gas quite yet, but you can see how this bag is filled with gas. And you know when it's filled with gas like that, 
that this stuff is fermenting and it's really, really good. And guys, this is exactly what the butterflies are gonna wanna see. So guys, that is exactly what you wanna see. That's how you know your bait is ready. It's, it's producing the gas, it's producing the alcohol. It's the, the fruit is starting to ferment with the sugar and the water. And it's literally the, the perfect situation for hanging. So guys, this is our bait and we're gonna hang it right now. All right, so I got my string for my trap. I don't have that long of a string on this one. Okay, there's our trap. And what I do is I have a, I get an eight ounce banker sinker, like a lead weight for fishing. And I take my rope and I make these little zip ties in it in case it doesn't, the rope doesn't fit through that little thing. Oops. And I string it through here. And then what I'm going to do is I'm just going to tie two square knots around this. Super simple. You don't have to tie them too tight. And what you're going to do with this is you're going to use that weight to toss your line up on the top of your tree limb. Oops. This can get a little goofy to be honest, but all right. So now here's what you got. You got your tree limb, okay? And the weight, what it does is you'll, it enables you to, first of all, throw it. And then once it goes over the tree limb, you want it to come back down. So here's our trap guys. The weight, the weight makes that super easy. All right, now, what we'll do is we'll leave this guy, we'll tie this up right here to a tree. Let's see, I might want it a little higher than that. Yeah, let's see. Anyway, gotta work on it. Okay, now, now that my trap is thrown, I just untie my weight, put it back in my bucket so I don't lose it, and we're good to go. Okay, put this guy back in my bucket. Now, the, the limb is slanted that way, and the trap will slide that way as well. So what you wanna do is you wanna have your, your rope tied to something that keeps it from sliding down because you don't want your trap hanging too close to a tree or something like that because you don't want a rat or a raccoon or something to be able to crawl up on here and reach your trap. In fact, I might just break this limb just to make sure that no critters can get on my trap. And there we go. All right, now, now for the fun part, here's my base. I get a pie pan, this base is designed to fit this pie pan perfectly. I get my bait and I get a little water, okay? I get my pie pan in the middle. I, I put this on a nice flat surface and then I get my bait and I just pour it in. And there's a lot of, there's a lot of water in this. You don't wanna, you're trying to wanna not allow the water to spill too much. In fact, that's going to be, that's absolutely perfect. Okay. That's the perfect amount of bait. That's why the, my formula includes five apples and two bananas, half a cup of sugar, half a cup of water. And that's literally the perfect amount of bait and substance to fill one pie pan. I might add a little bit of water just to make sure it's supposed to be dry for the next few days. So I want to make sure that this thing, the water, it needs to be wet. You don't want it to evaporate and have your bait dry out because then it won't catch anything. So now we just hook these little hooks up.
to here. We we'll spin this. We make sure these are all hooked up. All right, guys, this trap is ready. So There's a lot of problems that you can have with these traps. I have this one here with a, a shade that keeps the, the butterflies, when they come in and the moths, they'll go to the top. And when they're in the shade, that keeps them quiet. So when I come back in a day or two to check the trap, the, the bugs that are in the trap are in the top and they're in the dark so that it keeps them a little bit more quiet so they're not beating around too much until I, until I find them. Now, here's how this works, guys. The butterflies will smile the bait and they will fly and they'll kind of zip around here and they'll look for how to get at the fruit. And then eventually they'll find down here this gap and they'll crawl in right here and they, they still can't get at it. And what they'll do is they'll crawl up this little tiny thing, this little tiny crack right here and they will crawl into the trap. Now, once they're inside, they'll start feeding and they'll feed there for however long. And when they're done feeding, butterflies instinctively fly up. Actually, there's, there's, <laughs> it's kind of funny. The strangler fig sap is falling on me. I think I must've hit the, uh, I think I hit the, the, <laughs> I hit the branch with my uh, weight and the sap is falling on me and if you don't know about ficus sap, it can be, it's very poisonous. So I gotta make sure that I, that's why I always bring a rag. I'll wipe, I'll, I'll wash my hands here in a minute. But um, I'm gonna step aside so that I don't get dripped on anymore. Yeah, so this is how they find their way in. One of the problems you can have are these hooks. If, uh, you know, and if you're in an area that has white-tailed deer, <laughs> which I'm not sure if white-tailed deer are here or not. I'll bet they are. I'll bet they, I'll bet they come up and down this line. But um, you gotta make sure this is tall enough where the deer can't get to it. So I'm gonna raise it up a little bit so that it's closer, the top of the trap is closer to the rim of the, or the, the, this limb up here. And that's good. Now, one thing you always gotta make sure is that your zipper is up, which it is. I've left the zipper open and that's the way butterflies and moths and stuff will exit the trap. Great thing about these traps, guys, is that when they have their butterflies in it, their moths or whatever, they, they have food and they have shelter. So they literally, they stay very healthy. And when you come the next day, you can, you know, see what's there. You can survey what's there. If there's something that you want to, like, I'm going to take a female or two for eggs and I'm going to let everything else go. But um, everything's alive. So we can release everything unharmed through this great giant zipper here on the side. And so I always label my traps. There's a label up on the top with my name and phone number on it uh, and permit numbers if you're, if I'm in a refuge or something like that. But uh, guys, that's it. I'm gonna raise this up now. now. The trick is you gotta be careful when you're undoing this not to spill your bait. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna lift up on this and I'm gonna pull at the same time. And that should be high enough to keep it out of the way of any white-tailed deer if they're in the area. And so now I, I tie it up underneath this, this little branch here. And I make a really simple loop. Some people really go overboard with a knot that they tie and I just make it really simple. Cause gosh, I hate, trying to untie stuff and it's super tight. So I just do a triple square knot like that and we're good. So, all right guys, I have my second trap hanging. It's got my information up there and it's hanging right from a big hackberry tree. And this is like literally hackberry everywhere, guys. This is all hackberry, all Celtus. This is all the host plant for the question mark, uh, Tawny Emperor, Hackberry butterfly, the snout butterfly, and probably a ton of moths. So um, there's a bunch of it here. I mean, it's literally littered. There's other things. There's palm trees. There's strangler figs. There's some what looks like red bay or something like that. And there's some other plants. But the predominant plant in this hammock is indeed uh, hackberry. So that's a great thing because you know when you're when you're baiting. Guys, you got to think, where's the best place giving me the best opportunity 
for my butterfly or my moth or whatever I'm targeting, I gotta know a little bit about it. So the, the, the hackberry trees in this area, guys, are the host plant. And so this is gonna give us the best chance to find our targeted species. So, and we always get other things too. So that's cool. Um, but let's see, I got two more traps to put out and then we're gonna go on a little bit of a hike and see what else we can find uh, here in this hammock and our, in the surrounding area. So let's go get those other traps hung. Guys, there's a little baby pig, wild boar, right there, guys. <laughs> I got him on video, man. Oh, my goodness. Oh, goodness. I'm, I'm kind of glad Mama's not around. I don't want to see Mama. They can get very big. I don't want to see Mama. All right, folks. That is... The fourth trap, beautiful stand of hackberry. This whole line right here, guys, is hackberry. And, oh, it's hanging from a strangler fig. But I'm excited because, you know, well, I'm excited because I just saw a bunch of little baby pigs, which was pretty cool. But I'm more excited because I can't wait to see what comes to these traps. And hopefully they're high enough that the pigs can't get to them. That's what I try to do. Try to make sure they're high enough where the pigs can't get to them or other vermin. But let's see, guys. I want to show you literally just how short of a distance it is to the sugarcane fields, guys. My GoPro just died. All right, sugarcane. Right there is a southern white. And along this whole line are hackberry trees. And you can see all the southern whites there laying in the name. But, all right. Sugar cane, here's what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna walk across this ledge and try not to get nailed by spiders. And I wanna show you just how narrow of a little strip this is. Here's my trap. Okay, we're just gonna, we're gonna walk across. And it's a little bit, you know, I think the understory's cleared out. Um, Cause I think there's a, it's a hiking trail. It's actually a marked hiking trail. But there's a cool vine. Look at that flower. Very cool flower on this vine. Uh, anyway, here we are. We got ground orchids. That's pretty cool. Lots of ground orchids. And I'm going across. And literally, the road is right there. Here's a zebra. There's a zebra floating through the hammock. My other trap is right there, okay? And the road is literally right up here, guys. And so I'm gonna, oop, poison ivy. Let's not get into that. I'm going to walk up here and my other trap's looking good. No problems so far. Hopefully it's out of the way of the piggies. And I'm gonna just cut across right here. This is a trail right here, guys. It goes all the way through. Pretty neat place to hike. There's not a lot to this little habitat, but here's my truck right here. <clears throat> okay, trying to get nailed by spiders. There, there we go. I saw on this uh on this little tree on this was well, not very little it's a strangler fig it's, it's actually massive um on this strangler fig tree i saw evidence of ruddy dagger wing caterpillars and so wouldn't it be cool to add that to our video if we were to find some ruddy dagger wing so how to find ruddy dagger wing caterpillars they're actually very easy because I don't know if you can see on this little leaf, you can see the leaf damage, but on the very end of the leaf, you see a frass chain and the first and second instar caterpillars of this species and many other nymphalids will actually spit together and glue together little tiny pieces of its frass along the mid rib of the leaf. Actually, you can kind of see it better like that, sticking off the end of that leaf. And that's where the caterpillar actually rests when it's not eating. So. Uh, no caterpillar here, though. 
Let me see if I can find them. There's a cryptolamus. A little cryptolamus. He's eating aphids. Uh, I'm not seeing the ruddy daggerwing caterpillar, but I am seeing his frass chains all over the place. There's another one. But um, yeah, I'm not seeing the larva. It'd be cool to see a caterpillar. That's one of the coolest caterpillars around, man. And what would also be cool is to find a uh, ficus sphinx caterpillar. Same host plant. Um, here's larval damage from one of the metal mark moths, probably Tortyra slesonia. One of the most brilliantly colored moths down here in South Florida, but it's super, super tiny. Um, the Peralid uh, kind of family, the micro moth family. So, uh, yeah, here's these uh, metal mark moths really do a, a number on strangler fig stems, uh, marrow stems. I, I apologize, guys, about all the noise. Um, it is a very high traffic area. So, all right, guys, no ruddy daggerwing caterpillars. Let's see. We'll see if we can find a few more later, but we have some traps to hang. Let's do that. All right, guys. So our traps are all set out and I'm excited because it's looking good back there, guys. It's looking really good. So I'm just going to make sure that I don't leave any garbage and then there's nothing in the back of my truck that will fly out snap the lid on my bucket and then uh gotta make sure we are respectful of that stuff make sure that we don't have plastic stuff flying out there that ain't going nowhere all right guys i'm excited there's traps two traps in there and two traps about a quarter mile down the road there and so we've got four traps total. We're gonna let them sit for a couple days and we are gonna come back and see how they do. So if you like this video, you learned something, give me a thumbs up. Don't forget to subscribe to the channel and um, let me know what you want me to hunt for. Let, I, I, we're gonna go out and we're gonna go on adventures. We're gonna go searching for bugs, butterflies, moths, beetles, birds, whatever, and baby pigs, <laughs> whatever comes along. So guys, like, share, comment, and, uh, Stay tuned for what we find in these traps in a couple days. Don't forget to hit the bell for notifications uh, next to the subscribe button. Because when you hit that bell, when we post our videos, you'll get notified. And that is super cool so you don't miss any of the action. All right, guys. See you next time. And uh, stay tuned to see what we get in these traps. Enjoy South Florida.